So good afternoon or good morning, everyone. My name is Burton Kelso. I'm the chief technology expert at Integral. Um, our company is based in the greater Kansas City area, but uh, we do service nationwide. Um, I'm here to talk to you Orange County real estate agents and professionals about cybersecurity. We're talking about, is your real estate business cyber secure? There's seven tips and steps that I'm going to share to make sure that you are keeping your data from your buyers and sellers safe from hackers and breaches. So uh, one of the worst things that you want to see as an agent is the fact that you've been hacked. No one wants to see that message and no one wants to have to deliver the bad news to your buyers and sellers that their information has been compromised in the data breach. Unfortunately, with this, there are many ways that that data can be compromised. And so as real estate agents, you have to be aware of all of the different threats that are going on out there in order to keep yourself safe and secure. Uh, probably one of the best ways to keep safe from all of the threats out there is to make sure that you are educated because the best cybersecurity defense is someone who is well informed of all the threats out there and knows what steps to take in order to keep themselves safe and secure. So let's identify some of the threats that are out there. So the most prevalent threat and the most dangerous threat is ransomware. Now ransomware um, is malicious software that can get onto your smart devices and your computers and actually destroy your files. But sometimes ransomware also pops up in a manner that um, just shows a message on your screen showing that your device has been hacked. The whole idea is for you to, um, the whole idea is for you to call the tech support number in order to get support for your device um, and therefore tricking you to giving up access to your computer and your devices to a cyber criminal. Obviously you don't want this to happen so if you see a ransomware threat on your computer, you ignore the ransom and you never pay the ransom. And you make sure that your information is backed up so that you can just tell the cyber criminals that you're okay, you don't need to, their services and move on. Our next threat is malware. Now malware used to be a lot more prevalent as in software that you download onto your computer and it promises to help you, but in actuality, it's causing your computer harm. Now, you agents are probably gonna laugh, but one of the most prevalent forms of malware right now is antivirus software. So if you're an agent that's still using some of the free antivirus packages such as Avast or ABG, those packages can be considered malware and you want to make sure that you aren't using antivirus packages like malware bytes or abg or or any other free package out there because it definitely can be considered malware another threat which is a more recent threat is zoom bombing which obviously i'm trying to prevent <laughs> from happening during this zoom presentation so if you notice my eyes darting back and forth, I'm monitoring everyone to make sure that no one's gonna come in and bomb our meeting so that way that this Zoom meeting can become enjoyable and uh, uninterrupted. Um, Zoom bombing, for those who don't know, is the practice of someone jumping in to your Zoom meeting and disrupting it. Uh, one of the challenges or one of the things that happens during Zoom bombing is that the host does not do a decent job of making sure that the Zoom meeting is secure before everyone joins the meeting. So it's always important 
if you are hosting your own Zoom meeting that you make sure that you have the proper security protocols in place. There are several things that you can do in order to make sure that your Zoom meeting is safe and secure, and we'll talk about that as we move on. Another cyber threat that you have to deal with and is most prominent is phishing schemes. Now, phishing schemes are emails or calls or even texts that come in that act like they come from a trusted source, but they're phishing for your personal information. Now, the challenge is, as real estate professionals, your information is out there. So it's very easy for a scammer to gather your email and other information and pose as a trusted source in order to gather your important data. Now, another on unknown threat that real estate agents can be susceptible to is what's called credential stuffing. Now, I know that doesn't look like stuffing there in the slide, but credential stuffing is the act of cyber criminals going on the dark web and in data breaches and getting your personal information. Um, with, when you have large scale data breaches, um, your information is leaked on the web. So as agents, you always have to be cognizant of the information that is out there of, about you on the web. Now, someone posted a question to CW and it's, I guess, to everyone. So hi, CW, I'm Burton. And so CW's question is, is would you re recommend antivirus software? Come out about Windows Defender and others that come with the update. Now, CW, if you hold on, we're gonna get to antivirus software out there and I'm gonna talk about the best uh, software out there for smartphones, Macs, and Windows computers. So the truth to be told about all the cyber threats out there is that it all boils down to you. It's your job and you're the one responsible as far as data breaches and cybersecurity is concerned. And this is because more than 99% of cyber attacks rely on human interaction. That means basically that all of your devices are safe and secure. So that means if you've got a Windows device, a Macintosh, smartphone or tablet, your device is secure as long as you keep it up to date. It also means that in order for you to fall victim to a data breach or to a hack, you have to click on something in order to initiate the attack. So if you get a phishing email and you click on it and give out information, you've caused yourself to be breached. It's rare instances where criminals will actually break into your device to uh, access your personal data someone gets access to your personal data, it's because you, the real estate professional, has inadvertently given that out. So phishing schemes, ransomware, all of that, it's because you clicked or interacted on something that you shouldn't have clicked on. So it's very preventable. All of the stuff out here, as far as data breaches, you just have to make sure that you educate yourself and also with the wire fraud that goes on in real estate industry, educate your buyers and sellers so that they understand what threats that they need to look out for. And But educate yourself and enlighten yourself so that you stand out from everyone else as far as making sure that your devices are safe and secure. Now, what tips can you do in order to keep yourself safe? Now, the first one is probably one of my favorite ones, and it's probably going to make you really think about the stuff that you post online. But tip number one is to become a cyber liar. That's right. Lie about everything that you talk about online. You do not have to be tell the truth about everything about your personal lives. Remember, as real estate professionals, your information's out there. You probably have a domain with your name. Uh, you probably have a website with your name, you've got email with your name, um, and your information's listed out there. And with social media, with you sharing all that pertinent information, it's very important for you to lie about all of the personal details about you. Uh, people can know your birth date, but maybe not your birth year. Um, maybe you can um, talk, you can talk about family members, but you don't have to share so much detail. The reason being when you're on so social media, 
that information is being shared out there without you knowing about it. You share birth dates, you share grandma's uh, anniversary date. All of these, or this information that you share is information that um, you are using for your security. You forgot your security uh, reset. So when you do the password reset, all that information's out there. One of the things you probably need to watch out now on social media is um, is the graduation picture thing or the challenge. I will call it the graduation social media picture challenge. People are sharing graduation photos for the 2020 seniors, but they're also putting the year that they graduated and they're also putting the uh, the school that they went to. And these questions are, are asked when you have security password reset options. So criminals are always looking for personal information out there. So the challenge is, is you don't want to share that much information because they are looking through everything. The more you share, the more information criminals can get again get for you. So when I say become a cyber liar, when you're setting up that password reset option, make sure that you're lying about that information so that when it's time to reset that password, if you're being truthful online, then when you set up your password reset information, make sure that it's not real so that it's hard to set up or for, hard for cyber criminals to infiltrate your accounts. Next is number two, make sure that you find out if your information has been compromised. Again, if you're online and you are using um, your, if you're, you're using your real estate information out there, it's gonna be on the web. So there are tools that you can go to make sure that you haven't become a victim of a data breach. And some of those tools are, number one is have I been pwned? Have I been pwned is a website that you can go to to find out if your email has been leaked in a data breach. And why is this important? Because as real estate professionals, many times your lives blur between personal and business. So sometimes you'll use your online accounts to sign up for services. And you don't want to do that. You really want to keep your email for first your email for business use and have a personal email for personal use as well. So what you can do is whatever email address you're using, you can go to Have I Been Pwned and make sure that um, your email has not been compromised. If you go to Have I Been Pwned and it says you've been pwned, uh, you need to go through and change the passwords for any online account that you've used that same password for. Another utility that you can use to find out if your information is floating around on a dark web is a website called Dehashed. Now Dehashed allows you to put in your email address as well to find out if it's floating around on the dark web. And that email or the website is dehashed.com. But Dehashed is an important site for you to go to to find out if your information's been leaked because this is where credential stuffing comes in. Criminals get this information, they utilize your email address and your passwords to log into your online accounts. And if you're like most real estate professionals out there, you're probably using some form of web-based email. And so if your email is accessible from the web for you, that also means cyber criminals are also able to access that information from the web as well. So make sure that you're changing passwords on a regular basis. But number one, make sure that you are finding out if your information has been leaked. So you can go to Have I Been Pwned and you can go to, um, you can go to Dehashed and um, find out if that information's there. Now, we have a question, and so wants me to repeat the websites that I went through again. So let's do that, and there's one more I haven't talked about, so I'm gonna go back and sh share the screen. So number one is haveibeenpwned.com. So it's exactly how you see it, minus this section right here. It's haveibeenpwned.com. The next website you want to visit is dehashed.com. So it's dehashed.com. And then finally, uh, you want to visit fightingidentitycrimes.com. Now it's powered by Easy Shield, which is, I wouldn't recommend you use Easy Shield's antivirus, but I will say this company is providing a great 
resource for you to check out if you have been part of a data breach. Uh, Fighting Identity Crimes has a list of every data breach from 2012 up to the current month. Fighting Identity Crimes lists companies that that have been victimized. So you, with Fighting Identity Crimes, you want to make sure that companies that you've dealt with, you haven't, or they haven't leaked your information out there. Because it's possible with a data breach that the company has been breached, but then they haven't let anyone know that they've been breached. So you've got to do your homework. So you've seen companies like, I um, almost said Verizon, but Verizon hasn't been hacked. Second, think of the Equifax, Equifax, Target, Dunkin' Donuts, you name it, companies have been compromised. So again, we fall victims of habit and we start to use email addresses that are associated with our business. But also to your personal information you give out to some companies like social security numbers, uh, names, addresses. So go to Fighting Identity Crimes, find out if a company you've been dealing with has been breached and make sure that you either A, change all your passwords and usernames, but then also too, if the breach is severe enough, you may have to sign up for identity protection services like LifeLock or some of the other companies out there. I don't have a recommendation either way, but um, if you go to Fighting Identity Crimes and it says that you need to sign up for some protection, you probably need to sign up for it. So our next tip, number three, is improve your password protection. And everyone's like, man, that's a no brainer, Bruton. Why are you even bringing up passwords? Well, I'm bringing it up because passwords are probably the most important thing as far as securing your online accounts. And so when it comes to passwords, you really have to rethink how you do your passwords. And the best way to do that is to set up what's called a passphrase. Now, passphrases are basically a mashup of different words or a combination of two words that are put together in order to create a secure password. Now, if you've listened to my presentations, my favorite example of a passphrase that you would use to replace your password would be the passphrase of stinky chicken. Now, I've never been on a farm, so I don't know if, I guess I take that back, I have been on a farm, but I've never smelled a chicken. But I just equate the word stinky chicken together because people don't think about chickens being stinky. And I guess if you're on a farm, maybe you do, but for the average person, this would be a great passphrase. Now to secure that passphrase, if you were to use stinky chicken, you would want to uh, add in a special character and some numbers to make it a nice secure passphrase. So you can come up with any combination of the passphrases such as purple tiger, or maybe yellow iguana, but anything, or yellow human being, yellow skin, purple dictionary. Those are the types of things that you wanna use in order to take the place of your passwords, because passphrases uh, help keep you secure, because the problem we run into with our passwords is that so often we utilize words that are familiar to us to create a password. So we're using Fluffy or Dog or Cat. We're using kids' names, we're using birth dates. And of course, like I stated before, we're sharing this information on social media. So if a cyber criminal is looking at you, trying to get access to your information, they're gonna look to those words and try those trigger words first. So if you use a passphrase that has nothing to do with you or real estate or anything, uh, it's going to help keep you safe and secure. The next thing you wanna do with all of your online accounts as far as password protection is to use two-factor two or two-step authentication. The way this works is you set it up on your online account. Whenever someone logs in from an unknown lo location, um, you want to set it up so that it sends an alert to your phone. You get your phone, your phone pops up and says, oh, is this you logging into your account? And you say, yes, it's me you agree, and then you're allowed access to your account. So if a cyber criminal gets access to your account, then if you've got two-factor authentication set up on any of your accounts, then you have to verify access to that account before it is logged in. 
So I have a question, and it also is leading to my next um, slide or point. So the question is, is, do you suggest we use the same passphrase for multiple accounts? So to help us remember easier. So that answer is yes. You need to always use different passwords or different passphrases for all of your online accounts. Because if one account is compromised, it doesn't mean all of your accounts are compromised. And I hate to say this, but I've run into real estate agents who are forever using the same passwords for all of their online accounts. With my company, Integral, we're constantly helping agents out who have fallen victim to using the same passwords for their web-based email accounts. And if that happens, the, the, the results can be catastrophic. So to help remember those passwords, you can use a password keeper. Now there are several password keepers that you can use, such as LastPass, L-A-S-T-P-A-S-S dot com, which is a free password keeper that will allow you to keep track of all of those secured passwords or passphrases that you're using. You can also utilize the services of your browser. So if you're using Chrome or Safari, Firefox or Microsoft Edge, all of those browsers have the option for you to save your different passwords and passphrases in them. Easy. You just enable that feature in your browser by going to your browser settings and turn it on. And so whatever password you enter in for a website, your browser will remember it for you. And again, keep all of your passwords separate and different for all of your online accounts. Now, this is this next tip is a wonderful tool that I recommend everyone use. This is the Google's password checkup extension. So I'm not sure how many of you feel about Google Chrome, but Google Chrome is probably one of my favorite browsers because of all the plugins you can add. Now you can Google the words password checkup extension for Chrome and enable this utility. What this password extension utility does in Chrome is that it searches the internet or passwords that have been used and it um, compares it to the password that you're using. So with this browser extension enabled in Chrome, it will scour it. And so if you're using a password that is commonly used, the Google password uh, checkup feature will pop up and say, hey, this password is being used on another online account. Doesn't necessarily mean your online account that means someone out there in the world is using that password, which means it puts your password at risk for being compromised. So download the Google Password Extension Keeper to make sure that you're monitoring your online accounts. My next tip is to set up an automatic backup system for your devices. Automatic is the key. Automatic does not mean I plug my flash drive in to my computer two weeks ago and I have a backup. And as I'm on the subject, these devices, which is a flash drive, this is a Kingston flash drive, I would never, never, ever, ever recommend you to use a flash drive for a backup. Flash drives are basically your 2020 version of a floppy disk. For those that are old, old enough to know what a floppy disk is, these are great for temporary storage, but flash drives have a finite or short lifespan, probably around two years if you use it on a regular basis. And flash drives fail without warning. So if you're backing up to a flash drive, don't stop it. Use an external hard drive instead or use a form of cloud backup. Now it doesn't matter what device you have, you need to set up an automatic backup system. And I know this slide shows all Apple devices. That's nothing against you Windows users out there. The key of the slide is to get you in the mindset that no matter what device you have, you need to back it up. So there's several ways that you can back up your devices. You can back it up with an external hard drive. This is a Seagate uh, external hard drive here, plugged up to a Mac. Again, Windows users, don't get offended just a graphic. 
Uh, you can also, uh, with your external hard drive, is you can, if you're a Windows user, you can utilize Windows file history to back up your information. Uh, you can also, if you're a Mac user, you can use Time Machine to back up your information to an external hard drive. But the problem with external hard drives is, is that if you're backing up, the chances are that you're gonna plug in that external hard drive, especially if you're working remotely or slim to none. External hard drives work great with desktop computers, but for laptops, especially if you're working mobile with your laptop and you're moving from room to room, the last thing you're gonna do is to back up or plug in that external hard drive to do a backup. So my recommendation is to use some form of cloud backup system. And with the cloud, there comes concern. I get it. People are worried about the cloud, but you really shouldn't have to be. And to explain the cloud, the cloud is basically someone else's computer. So there's a difference between cloud storage and cloud backup. Now, cloud storage would be services that are like these. So if you've got iCloud, Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, those are cloud storage services. Great for you to be able to access your files anywhere in the world but not so great as far as backing up your stuff. Now iCloud and Google Drive and OneDrive do offer a quote unquote backup service, but backup means redundancy, which means that you've got uh, infinite amounts of backup available for your devices. That's where cloud backup services come in. And the two that I recommend for your computer would be Carbonite, and Backblaze. Now Carbonite, which is at Carbonite.com and Backblaze, which is at Backblaze.com, are two services that are pretty inexpensive. So for about $70 a year, you can get unlimited backup for your computers. You install the software, you pay the money, and your files are automatically backed up to the cloud. Automatically, so that means as soon as you turn on your computer, as soon as you turn on your laptop, it's backing up those files as long as it has internet access. Now, I will say um, the services I talked about, and we'll go through them, do have a backup service. So if you've got OneDrive, you've got OneDrive backup and sync that will back up information from your computer and send it to your OneDrive account. Again, this is great if you are just wanting to make sure that you have consistency between all of your devices, meaning that you are able to access your real estate documents from anywhere. Uh, same thing with iCloud Drive, but keep in mind with iCloud Drive, you can only back up Apple-related documents. So if you're using, um, if you're using, I can't even think of the program, Write or Numbers or Pages, then um, those are the only things that will be backed up automatically with iCloud Drive because Apple only plays with Apple and Windows only plays with Windows. Now, one of the features that you can use uh, to back up to your Google Drive is Google Backup and Sync. Now, the good thing about Google Backup and Sync is that it is multi-purpose. So the challenge with smartphones is that Carbonite and Backblaze aren't available for smartphones. Um, but Google Backup and Sync is available for smartphones. So you can use this as an option to back up those Google Docs and any documents on your smartphone, and you can take advantage of Google Photos. So as agents, you've got tons of photos. Now you're doing virtual showings with your smartphone and walking through the house like this, um, and you wanna be able to save those videos. So Google Backup and Sync allows you to store unlimited data, or not data, video and photos, unlimited high def photos. So utilize that and enable it on your Windows phone and your on your Android phone. It would perform a good backup. But again, if you want, if you have documents and you want uh, to have unlimited backup, then you would want to utilize the services of both, both Carbonite and of both Backblaze. $70 a year, unlimited backup of all of your stuff. So keep that in mind. Our next tip is five, protect and manage your mobile devices. Our mobile society, it's very important that you take steps to protect and manage your mobile devices. Um, there are many things that you have to do, but 
mobile devices are pretty delicate. Essentially, you need to treat it like you're carrying a baby around. So what can you do to keep those devices protected? Well, set a password for starters. A uh, password on your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop is very important. We're not out and about, but when you go out and about, you wanna make sure that you have a password on that device. So if it's stolen, then no one is able to access your data on your device. Uh, it doesn't matter if you do facial recognition, you do the drawing thing on your Android phone, uh, make sure it's got a password on it because think about all of the sensitive documents and sensitive apps that you have on your mobile devices that wound up in someone else's hands probably be, would be catastrophic and you don't want to be in that position. As a real estate professional, we have to go back to your buyers and sellers and say, hey, I lost all of your data. I was a victim of a data breach. So password protected. Next thing you wanna do is to make sure your devices are encrypted, make sure they're locked up. Encryption is the act of scrambling the information on your device. So if it winds up in the wrong hands, someone would need the password in order to get access to that device. Now on your smartphone, it's a pretty simple process of putting the password on, but for your computer, you need to enable specific tools. So if you're a Windows user, you can enable BitLocker on your Windows device to encrypt that data. Now, if you're a Windows user, in order to get access to BitLocker, you do have to use Windows Professional. So how do you know if you've got Windows Professional? Well, if you go to Cortana on your Windows device, you can actually type in the word system settings and it will let you know if you're using Windows Professional or Windows Home. Also, if you purchased your computer at an office supply store, it's a good chance it came with Windows 10 Home as opposed to Professional. Now, if you're a Macintosh user, it's just a simple matter of enabling what's called File Vault. Now, File Vault will come on any version of Mac OS. All you have to do is go to the search or the Spotlight search, type in File Vault, enable it, and it will make sure that your device is encrypted so that way if it falls into the wrong hands, their, your data will be safe and secure. Now, um, as far as data encryption is concerned, it's probably one of the most secure ways to pass or to protect your data because the encryption scrambles it up. If you've got a simple password on your laptop or on your desktop computer, Let's say you're working from home and you're a victim of either a home invasion or burglary. You don't want that information out. So if you've got any important business data on there, make sure it's encrypted um, because it's the best way. Computer passwords can be bypassed. Real easy to do it on a Windows computer or on a Macintosh computer. But if it's encrypted, it's virtually impossible to get access to that data. Now, uh, our next tip, number six, is work on unsecured networks with caution. That's not to say if you had to go out and about and probably the only place you're gonna work on an unsecured network, um, you are gonna go to the dealership. I guess you could go to Walmart and hang out and use the Wi-Fi if you wanted to get out of the house. But you wanna make sure that you take precautions when you use that free Wi-Fi. Now, before I go on, uh, we've got another question. So the question is, Burton, would you have advice about texting, which seems to be more common than email with clients? That's a good question. Now, as real estate professionals, you really need to set up how you're going to communicate with your buyers and sellers. Communication is key. You can't just go into real estate transactions and assume that your buyer or seller is gonna understand how you're going to communicate with them. So you need to either have that Zoom talk or a conversation that is going to establish those ground rules as far as communication. Now texting is a secure form of communicating. Now you can fall victim to um, text phishing, but again, you would have to interact with that text in order to have your device compromised or to give up compromising information. 
So if you're an agent and you're gonna use text as your preferred form of communication with your buyers and sellers, then you need to state that up front. Make sure that they have your text, your number in their phone um, and make sure that they understand what types of text messages you're going to send. And it wouldn't hurt to make a phone call before you send that text. But if you're not, and I understand that, make sure you set those parameters up so that they don't get a text coming from you. Now, this is kind of off script here because we were talking about uh, being cyber secure and we were talk about to talk about Wi-Fi. But this question brings up a good time to talk about smartphone texting and should you use your smartphone to stay cyber secure in your real estate business. Now, my train of thought is, is that you should have a separate number for your business, your real estate business, rather than giving out your cell phone number uh, to your buyers and sellers and posting that cell phone number on your site. So if you didn't want to get a different number for your real estate business, probably one of the things that you want to do is to make sure that you keep your cell phone private and only share that with people that you are doing actual business with. Now, it may be a good idea for you to get a general purpose number to post on your real estate website so that when people call in, they get the general number and criminals aren't yanking your cell phone number off of your site and using it to spoof your number in order to make calls. Nothing's worse as an agent to have your cell phone number out there and it being used to call people uh, in order to try to trick them into answering that. Because the only thing you're gonna get is calls from people saying, stop calling my number, I'm tired of this. And you don't wanna have to go through the process of having to change your number. Cyber criminals usually cabbage on to cell phone numbers. So it may be a good practice to um, utilize that a regular number and then only share your cell phone numbers with your trusted buyers and sellers that you're actively working with. Now, looks like we're not gonna get to the Wi-Fi section because someone asked another question and I'm okay with this. So the question is, is, is Office 365 online more secure than using updated unloaded, uploaded office software on an encrypted PC? So the answer is, and we're gonna talk about your keeping your software up to date uh, here, but let's talk about Office 365. Office 365 online is a subscription paid service. So basically, you're just renting out Word and Excel. It's no different than the software that you have pre-installed on your computer. So if you're an agent using a Microsoft Office product, the only two products that are currently supported by Microsoft right now are Office 365 and Microsoft Office 2010. And I take that back, Office 2013 is still supported by Microsoft. So the furthest back is Office 2010. Now, as far as um, Microsoft Office 360 online, with any online account, it boils down to passwords. As long as you're using a safe and secure password for your OneDrive account, for your Microsoft Office 365 account, you are perfectly safe. Your OneDrive information is encrypted in the cloud. Um, your Office 365 products are installed on your local computer. So as long as you're not allowing someone access, then they're not gonna get into your stuff. But if you're using weak passwords, and if you're using the same password for all of your online accounts, then that Office 365 information is gonna be compromised. Not only hackers will be able to access your Microsoft account and get access to your Outlook or Hotmail emails, they'll also be able to see the information stored in your OneDrive account. Uh, and they'll also be able to see specialized folders in your email. Now, true story, this happened to a real estate agent last week with Office 365. Had an Office 365 account, was using different passwords for all of the online accounts. The mistake that this agent made was that they had a password file set up in their online email account. So of course, once the email was breached, then criminals scanned through all the folders, found 
passwords for all of their home and business activity and they were able to log into banking information, credit card information, and of course, steal money. So make sure that your passwords are safe and secure and um, that will keep all of your online accounts safe and secure because OneDrive, Office, uh, all of those web-based sharing programs, the data is encrypted in the cloud, but you have to make sure that you're using secure password information. Now, moving on to the Wi-Fi setup, it's okay to use Wi-Fi, but you have to take caution and make sure that you're using, um, using the right and secured Wi-Fi if you're out and about. So a car dealership, if you have to take your car in, they're offering free Wi-Fi, you're probably not gonna be as much of, of a risk as if you were heading to a coffee shop, which obviously there are none open right now, or the library. So if you have to use that Wi-Fi, Utilize VPN software. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, which creates a tunnel that allows your data to go um, safe and secure, and it allows hackers not to see your stuff. Now, as far as VPN software, two of my favorites are Tunnel Bear and NordVPN. Both are paid services. Uh, they allow you to uh, access it on any device and it's great. So we have a question. So the, another question asking, um, which online email account service is the most secure? Is Gmail the best? <laughs> I will tell you. So the answer is, as far as online email is concerned, online email accounts as an agent, you really want to stay away from. They're all secure, but cyber criminals target those free online accounts. So if you have a Gmail account that's free, meaning that it's free and it says at gmail.com, you have an at aol.com, you have, um, you know, you have these free email accounts that you use, they're all safe and secure, but cyber criminals target those email accounts all the time. So you don't want to utilize e free email accounts. You want to uh, set up your own domain account because it puts you less of a risk at your email being compromised. Um, so if you're using it for home use, free email is great. As a real estate professional, please, for the love of God, get your own domain. Get your domain. It's going to cut down on the spam. It's going to be more secure. Uh, criminals aren't going to target it. If you have any free email accounts, you're going to be a target. And it also does not look professional as a real estate professional. Get a domain. Go to GoDaddy. Get your domain. Back to VPN software. Believe it or not, you can get plug-in VPN software for, and I don't know why Chrome is in here. That's a goof. Ignore this. Go over to Opera or Firefox. The web browsers Opera and Firefox have built-in VPN services. So if you're doing anything web-based, you can download Opera onto your computer if you're out and about, or even at home, and install the Firefox VPN plugin and utilize free VPN uh, within your web browser. Now, finally, as far as um, being out and about and making sure that you're safe and secure, the most secure way to stay connected to the internet when you're out and about is to use a mobile hotspot. Now, if you've got a real estate office and you aren't sure if your agents are using secure Wi-Fi at home, it may be a good idea for you to issue hotspots to all of those agents that are working remotely. Because if you have a mobile hotspot, it is a one-way or a two-way connection between your device and your cellular provider. So if a hacker wanted to get into that cellular data, they would essentially have to break into T-Mobile, AT&T, or Verizon's networks in order to get access to that data. So when you're mobile, when you're out and about, a VPN, a mobile hotspot is probably going to be the best method to keep your stuff safe and secure. So tip number seven is keep your devices and software up to date. I know it's a pain in the butt, right? Uh, debat, no matter what device you have, you've got to make sure that it's staying safe and secure because that is the way criminals are going to get access to your devices. 
And I know it's a pain in the butt. No one wants to sit down and sit through another update. And of course, they come at the most inopportune times. So who wants to download updates? But the history with updates is this. Most hardware and software manufacturers put out what's called a bug bounty. That means Apple, Microsoft, you name it. They put a bounty out that says, hey, if you can inf infiltrate our device, we're going to pay you money. And I think Apple is paying up to a million dollars for uh, to see if hackers can get into their devices. And so what happens is if that device is exploited or infiltrated, then the hardware and software manufacturer comes out with a, a bug fix and that bug fix comes in the form of an update. So when you see those updates come through, uh, you want to make sure that you download them immediately. Now to answer a question, we got a question. Uh, question is, so free public Wi-Fi such as Xfinity is more secure than limited public Wi-Fi such as Starbucks or the public library. Free public Wi-Fi from Xfinity, if we're on the same page, normally comes from somebody's router. So if you have an Xfinity account or a Comcast account, believe it or not, you're probably providing free Wi-Fi for your area. The way that Xfinity gets by with these free Wi-Fi hotspots sometimes is to piggyback a wireless signal onto someone's home or office router. So the question or the answer to that question is no. Always use a VPN or utilize your hotspot from your cellular provider such as T-Mobile, AT&T, or Verizon. Now I know Xfinity offers cellular service. So, but when I say Xfinity cellular service, I think they're piggybacking on Verizon's network. So verify if you do have Xfinity for mobile phone service that find out whose network they're on because Xfinity, at least in most of the country, they're piggybacking onto someone's network. So it would have to be one of the major three networks out there. It used to be four, now there's three with Sprint but verify whose network they're on. But if you are using Xfinity for your cellular service, then yes, it's a good chance that that service is gonna be more secured than the public Wi-Fi or, um, or Starbucks. But I will say, if you're gonna use public Wi-Fi, use it at the library. Trust me, that ain't gonna be hacker haven. Now, as far as making sure your updates are secure or your devices are secure, uh, if you're a Windows user, you want to use Windows 10 uh, to um, make sure that you get the latest and greatest updates on your devices. Um, if you're an Apple user, uh, you have three options, believe it or not. The most current version of Apple or Mac OS is Catalina. But Apple is usually lenient enough to say, well, we know Apple users are horrible at updating the devices, so we'll let you use some older operating systems. So if you're using Catalina, Mojave, and High Sierra, you are using secure stuff. If you have anything other than those three operating systems, then you are probably putting yourself at risk from not getting the most recent security updates. Now we've reached the point where we talk about antivirus software. And this is where the booze and the, uh, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're sharing this practice comes in. So if you're a Mac user, XProtect is already built into your Macintosh operating system. You can't see the panel for XProtect, but trust me, if you've got a Mac operating system, XProtect is working in the background and making sure that your Mac device is secure from the latest updates out there. So like a lock on your door, if you're, uh, obviously if you unlock the door by clicking on something, your device is going to, going to be compromised. But as long as you are smart about what to click on, then you're going to be safe. Now, Windows users, this is where everyone goes, goes up in arms. I highly recommend if you're using a Windows device that anything else that you have installed on your device, take off. Use Windows Defender, it's built in, it's free. It's got ransomware protection built into it, and it will keep your devices safe and secure. There's no need for those other programs such as Malwarebytes 
or Kaspersky or Norton or AVG or Avast, Windows Defender will handle it. Windows Defender used to be horrible, 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 horrible as far as antivirus software, but Microsoft has really stepped up their game because cybercrime has become such a threat. So if you've got a Windows-based computer, use Defender. Defender's built in. If you've got something now and it's about to expire, as soon as you uninstall it, Windows Fender, well, Defender will pop in its place and it will keep your system safe and secure. I will say, just like the tip that I gave at the beginning of this presentation, the most, um, the best way to keep your devices safe and secure is to make sure that you are educated and not clicking on stuff that comes to your, your box. You can keep yourself safe if you use safe practices. Now, if you've got an Android device, uh, Android 10 is the most current of Android. So if you've got an Android laptop or a laptop tablet or a smartphone, download Android 10. If you can't get it, it might be time to get a new smartphone, which I'm sure most of you are probably dying to do. Um, if you've got an Apple device, uh, iOS 13 is what you want to use. Um, if you've got an iPhone, to get iOS 13, I think the oldest version of iPhone you can have is an iPhone 8. Anything older than that puts you at risk. Now, if you're using it for um, casual purposes, that's fine. But if you're using it for business purposes, you do not want to use older technology. Uh, other things to keep yourself safe is to be aware of shoulder surfers when you're out and about as a real estate professional. People do look at your smartphone and devices, so make sure that you're not allowing people to shoulder surf or look over your shoulder when you're using your laptop or your smartphone even, because there's a lot of uh, stuff on your smartphone. And then make sure that you're protecting your device against theft. It happens, not as much now, but you know, if you have to go to the store, it can happen. Um, you um, can enable Find My Device for any device, Windows laptops, Mac laptops, smartphones and tablets and Androids, enable it. So if your device is stolen, you can get it back. It's for non-business use, not a big deal. You got your business laptop or smartphone out there, don't let hackers get into your stuff. So enable Find My Device on all your devices. Got a question. Anyone have hacking on their iPhone? I think this is just a general, question out to everybody. My answer is no. The way most smartphones are hacked are through the App Store. You download an app that allows hackers to get into your information. Apple, um, unless you jailbreak your device, does not have that issue. And Apple does an awesome job as far as making sure that the App Store does not have any malicious apps in it. If you have an Android device, that's not gonna happen as much because Android scours the App Store, but at the same time, uh, Android does not do a uh, as thorough job as Apple as far as devices on their, as far as apps on their phone. So uh, one other thing that I wanted to talk about, if any of you agents out there are going to do a Zoom meeting, let's talk about some of the stuff that you need to do in order to make sure that it's safe and secure. So if you want to prevent Zoom bombing, you probably need to do some of these practices. So number one, if you create a Zoom meeting, and it's gonna happen because you're gonna to have to talk to buyers and sellers at some point and become a virtual real estate agent. So number one, you wanna make sure that you create a new user ID and a password for each meeting. So if you have a Zoom account, you can use the same old meeting ID over and over again, but you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that your meeting ID is different and that your password is different for each Zoom meeting that you set up. Uh, the next step that you want to do is you want to disable the join feature uh, before hosting. So if you're hosting a meeting, make sure that no one can join the meeting before because they can come in and commandeer your Zoom meeting and take over as the host. And then they can do and say whatever they want to doing, during your Zoom meeting. Next tip is you want to um, try to create a waiting room so that you can only allow the participants to join when you allow them. Uh, you want to only allow screen sharing from the host. 
which is what I'm doing now, I hope, unless you're looking at me making faces, uh, you also want to di disable participants to rejoin if they um, join the meeting. And you want to make sure that you turn off file sharing in your Zoom meeting. And there's one other tip you want to do, and that's to make sure that you don't save your recorded meetings to the cloud. You want to save them on your desktop just in case your Zoom meeting uh, account is compromised. And you want to disable file transfer. And you finally, you want to make sure that you lock the meeting when you start a Zoom meeting so that when all the participants are there, uh, you lock the meeting so that no one can just bombard or jump into your Zoom meeting. So now there's a lot to cover as far as cyber crime, cyber tips. So if you ever get stuck, make sure that you always ask for help during uh, any time that you have questions about uh, cyber crime and technology because there's so much misinformation out there. So you always want to make sure you ask for help. And as they say, don't suffer in silence. Um, so ask for help. It's complicated. Find a tech savvy buddy. If you don't have one, find one to make sure that whenever there's a threat that you can contact them and make sure that you are approaching it in the right manner. One of the most crazy things that I've seen, and I saw it happen today with a celebrity, no doubt, being cyber stalked, which is horrible. But the general question out to the public saying, what should I do? When you have questions of that magnitude, the best thing is to find a professional and ask them directory, directly. If you just post it generally, you're just gonna get a mishmash of questions and it's just gonna confuse you more. So to sum things up as far as cybercrime is concerned, you are responsible. It's your duty to make sure that you're safe and keeping yourself safe and secure. Educate yourself. Make sure that you have all the steps or taking all the right precautions to make sure your devices are safe and secure. Because remember, 99% of cybercrime requires user interaction. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> make sure that you're keeping your safe and secure. We we'll have a question we're gonna answer, uh, but before we do that, let me put my credentials on screen. So again, I'm Burton Kelso. I'm the technology expert with Integral. Um, hopefully we're gonna be great friends. Um, so I love technology, I've read the manuals and I'm serious about making technology fun and exciting for you. Feel free if you wanna follow a tech expert on social media, uh, reach out to me, um, Burton Kelso. You can uh, just find me on all the social media platforms, videos, tips uh, and tricks and post. And then also you can email me at Burton at call integral now. So the question that I'm laughing about is someone said, uh, your blue shirt logo, Burton, what is Integral? Integral is my company. We're a technology services company. We're basically like Geek Squad for real estate professionals. So with that said, I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna open it up. We're gonna have some questions and